Hi, and welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. So today we're going to look at this problem, which is A, C, F, G, which is all pairs where G is a, a context-free grammar and W is in the language of G. And as I've said before, this will allow us to resolve the question of A sub PDA because like with DFAs, NFAs, and regexes, I can convert between CFGs and PDAs no problem, and that takes a finite amount of time. So whatever answer is for a CFG, the same answer is for a sub PDA. And I claim that a CFG is decidable. So one thing to keep in mind is that CFGs are, are non-deterministic in that we may not know necessarily which rule to apply, and we can't convert it to a deterministic uh, grammar uh, because we know that deterministic PDAs are not the same as non-deterministic PDAs. They're not the same in power. So I can't convert it to a deterministic thing. So we'll have to work with the CFG or the PDA directly, but we're going to work with the CFG because it turns out to be a lot easier to do. So how do we actually approach solving this? Well, what we want to do is to uh, see what derivations are possible, if any, because if there might not actually be a derivation. And one thing that's kind of annoying is that we don't know necessarily how long the derivation is going to be. Unlike with a DFA, where I know how many states I have to see just by, because I read one character at a time, here I have absolutely no idea how long this is going to take. And there, there are actually many ways of approaching this. So one method that's actually quite popular is the CYK algorithm which shows that uh, you can solve this problem in n cubed time, where n is the length of the input string w here. Um, uh, but additional processing work is needed in that you need to convert the grammar into Chomsky normal form first. So we're actually going to do the same thing here. So the first step here is to convert uh, g into c and f. Uh, and then call the resulting grammar G prime. So G prime is the same uh, language grammar, but just now in Chomsky normal form. And we know we can always do this because uh, not only is it algorithmic, but we showed in the conversion video that you can do it for any context free grammar. So I'm just going to call it G prime. And one thing that I'm going to claim here is that uh, any non-empty string, any non-empty string, let's say w, uh, that is in the language of g prime will take exactly two times the length of w minus one rule applications to to actually make the string. So if the length of the string w is 100, then it will take exactly 199 rule applications to generate that string, no matter what it is. So that's one of the awesome things about Chomsky normal form is that you know how many rules it'll take to actually make the string, whereas if it was an, an arbitrary grammar, we have absolutely no clue. So how do we actually prove this? Well, actually, once we actually prove this, then Figuring out what to do for A, C, F, G is easy because once we have it in C and F, then we just try all possible rule applications of length 2 times the length of the string minus 1. Just try them all, and if any of them work, then, uh, then we have successfully generated W, and if none of them work, then it's impossible to uh, generate W because of this claim. So how do we prove this claim? So... One thing to keep in mind is, uh, let's recall the structure of a grammar in Chomsky normal form. So it's going to be S goes to empty, A goes to little a, and A goes to B, C, where B and C are not the start variable. That's the structure of grammars that are in Chomsky normal form. So note here that uh, we have 
uh, the only way to make a terminal because the the string is not empty is uh, this one right here. This is the only way to ever make a terminal. So that means that this implies we need to generate uh, uh, the length of w variables because uh, to make one terminal I need a variable to make it. I may need multiple copies of the same variable but the length of w number of variables not necessarily distinct. So we need to get up to this point and every derivation every derivation starts with one variable, namely the start variable, and the only possible way to get more, is, more variables I mean, is with uh, A goes to BC, or rules of that form. And note what happens here. We have one variable that gets replaced, and we replace it with two. So every time we use one of these, we uh, will gain one variable exactly. So, yeah, so I should write that down. So this will give us plus one variables total. So this tells us that we need to go from one variable to the length of w variables. And as you might expect, uh, how, which, whatever rules in order that we apply them, this will take the length of w minus one uh, rule application to do this part right here, to go from here to here. Because we start with one and we gain one every single one of these we have to apply anyway. So we, I have to do w length of w minus one to get to that. And to uh, convert the w variables uh, into the length of w terminals because I can only replace one of them at a time. This will take, so this process will take uh, the length of w rule applications because I can only I can only replace one of them at a time. And so in totality we will get the length of w uh, times 2 minus 1 because these are completely separate from each other. All right. So that shows that every non-empty string in a grammar that's in Chomsky normal form will take exactly that many rule applications here. So the second step that we would need to do then, right here, is try all possible rule applications of length 2 times the length of w minus 1. And if any of them succeed, accept. If none of them work, reject. And that's it. So that was actually a really, really nice way of using uh, Chomsky normal form in a very clever way. There are other ways of doing it, like with Greibach normal form and other normal forms, but this is the one that's actually taught most often. And it's actually really, really simple because we know what Chomsky normal form is, and it's a nice property of how the strings are actually generated. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave comments about ACFG in the comments down below. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. I'm currently doing one-on-one -on -one tutoring. If you want to take advantage of that, my email is in the video description below. And as always, I'll see you next time.